to go somewhere else. Am I against ivermectin? I would say 99% of my colleagues are. <laughs> so clothing's not essential. This is what you get, you idiot. Idiot Ford. Yeah. Vaccines are killing people. Okay. Uh, there, there is no virus. Uh, you said there is no virus? Shame on you. Hello, folks. I am here with the international DJ known as Grifter160, the host of the Cole James Cash Show, the co-host of Log Off Already, Means Morning News correspondent. Folks, it's Cole James Cash. Cole, welcome to the program. It's been, it's been a couple of years, Mike. How's it going? I'm doing okay. How are you? You know, when, I, when, you're, when you're sipping OJ at 5.19 p.m. In, in, in the middle of nowhere in Canada, you know, and you're watching America get absolutely, you know, ransacked by the GOP, rightfully so. The only thing you can do, Mike, is, you know, have some gin, have some juice, maybe smoke some legalized weed and, um, you know, come on your show and talk about, hey, you know what's going on down in uh, Virginia and all that? Canadians apparently want to see that up here, you know? <laughs> so we, we yeah. can get into that. Yeah. So. Basically, you attended this rally. It's an anti-vax rally, and yes. the Canadian hogs were the ones who were squealing <laughs> about vaccine oh mandates, anti-vax bullshit. I just, I'm, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. My perception of Canadians is that they're just wonderful people. Because I mean, when you live in America, almost anything feels like it's better and preferable. But this kind of destroyed my view of Canadians. So. What was this rally that you attended and why was the show so batshit fucking insane? Because some of these clips that we're about to show people is mind boggling. So what was this? OK, so what this was, was this is a <laughs> which first of all, you need what you need to understand about Canada is, OK, I'm, I'm American. I'm from Oakland. OK, uh, my wife, my wife is from up here in Sudbury. OK, and then, of course, my good friend, brother Q. Formerly known as Andre Domis, he stays out in Toronto. And as I told you, he wants to get in touch with you. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know that guy don't like nobody, especially white people. But he says, "Let him just know I want to talk to him." That's, so that's a that good makes sign. you feel so honored. Yeah, that makes you feel <laughs> yeah, honored. That's a great sign. So with that said, I went to London, Ontario, to attend <laughs> the Back the Blue <laughs> Freedom Rally. I think it's called. Um, now, Back the Blue is because of this individual named Chris Sky. Um, I have a tough time with his last name. It's a, it's a very, it's, a, it's an Italian last name. You know, I don't want to butcher it. Mm. You know, um, I don't know if you noticed, but when you look at Michelle Fiore, you know, look at my co-host Antonia Decola. Italians are in right now. So Chris Guy, okay, he started this Back to Blue rally, similar to like you know America's Back to Blue, but it's for allegedly to raise money. For cops who don't want to get vaccinated and want to fight the lawsuit. I mean, I mean, I got to be honest, like, you know, this guy is the son of a real estate developer, um, mm -hmm. a re very rich real estate developer. I guess him and his dad are beefing. I don't know why my, my 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 partner, Kareem, would have more insight on that. You can you can have her on, you know, when you get the chance because she can break it down even more than me. I'm giving the, the American point of view, mm -hmm. which if you know the American point of view, I'm giving you, you know, watered down whatever it is that I see. But with that said, he's like his dad. He's suing his dad right now, you know, for whatever reason. And this guy's been on this anti-mask hype for, for about a year, year and a half. Um, his wife, uh, a woman named Jenny Sky, I guess she's a former escort from Miami. You know, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, bring in this, you know, he's he's LARPing this like, you know, you saw the footage and what will she'll show the don't tread on me flags, the we want freedom type stuff. Now, as you saw in the footage... I'm American. I've dealt with, I faced down the Proud Boys, you know, when they came to Berkeley, um, the Proud Boys again, they pulled up to San Francisco last uh, last uh, fall. You know, we were there for that. You know, I'm used to dealing with, you know, riot cops, et cetera. So I go to this rally, these rallies uh, with my partner Karima and there's no guns, you know, and I see a bunch of American LARPs. So I'm just like thinking, okay, you know, I think I'm going to need to get out there and ask some questions and see what's going on, because what you're essentially seeing is um, there's a party called the PPC. PPC is sort of the alt-right, you know, right to conservative. There would be, the, you know, you have the New Democratic Party and the liberals, mm -hmm. which is basically, you know, if AOC and the squad had their own party, it'd be the NDP. Right. And what I mean by that is, it's like 
okay, they're slightly more progressive. I'm not one to demonize the squad, but she is my favorite, though. That's my mm -hmm. girl. You know why? Because she sticks to 313 Detroit and what's going on in Palestine, and she don't speak on nothing else because she's focused on that, and I respect that a lot. But I have mm -hmm. no hate for the squad or anything like that, but the NDP sort of would reflect what the squad would be if they had, could have their own party. The liberals is like genuinely like the Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, Barack Obama, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we don't vote for prime minister. What you do is they literally, when we were signed to vote, it, I was shocked. You get a little like piece of paper. They don't even give you a name, ballots, no down ballot, nothing like who you voting for. So we wrote in our, who well, we wanted to win, not Everelli. Okay. She's a part of the NDP. I thought she had some decent progressive, whatever. And that's it. Like, mm -hmm. and whoever has the party majority, that's they, the, the, that party picks their prime minister. So mm -hmm. as cool as my man Jagmeet, AKA Swag Meat Singh, okay, mm -hmm. who, I'm, if he was American, he'd be that dude because he is that dude. But mm -hmm. does he have some neoliberal aspects to him? Yeah. yeah. They don't do this like superstar, like put him on every magazine. Trudeau isn't popping like that to where they do that. They don't mm -hmm. hero worship our, our people like that. They don't mm -hmm. have cool names like Swag Me. That tells you how polarized I'm, I'm as far left as you can possibly get. And I still do it. Mm -hmm. So you know, going back to Chris Skye. Developing a cult of personality for Canadians, for politicians, is not easy to do. Yeah, And he was able to do it because Chris Guy has said bigoted, racist. Think of Mike Cernovich. Mike Cernovich isn't out there with his ignorance, but he does enough to let you know that he's in that guerrilla mindset. You mm -hmm. know, shout out to Big Burger. Um, <laughs> you know, and shout out to my father, Sam Cedar. I don't know if you know that's my dad. Um, he's my uncle. That's your uncle. No, no, you you um you can ask no, you kidding. can ask Sam himself. <laughs> you can ask Sam himself. Ask Jamie Peck. They know. Sam C ask will, <laughs> Sam will tell you himself that I am his son. With that said, I wouldn't be shocked that was your uncle because that glasses, them glasses, man. It's you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like the guys like that, like uh, like a Cernovich character, these guys understand that okay, now he's kind of he was kind of rocking with the PPC. You know, which is a far right party that is gaining traction. Okay, they had like eight hundred thousand something votes up from just a I forgot how many thousand from twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. So, just because they're nicer up here about it in Canada, those same white grievances exist. And you right. saw in my footage the type of racism and things like that 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 you see outright. The thing is about I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, so there's a couple of moments in particular where I was genuinely concerned for your safety, and it felt like <laughs> what you'd expect from America. And you said this a couple of times, just without the guns. But aside yeah. from that, there's also the stupidity that you see at these really weird QAnon anti-vax rallies. Yes. Um, so I'm glad that you gave us the context for some of this, because I think that people yeah, such I as hope myself, I made sense here. I hope I, what I said made no, sense. No, I think that was, that was really a perfect primer, Great. because people Thank don't you. necessarily understand... Uh, the dynamic in in canada we're all kind of self-absorbed here and yeah. rightfully so this uh, affects us the parliamentary but, system is so much better look at what i said we don't vote yeah, for prime is. minister i just voted for one person they don't even give you a ballot it's just write this write that in write it in yeah that's it that's like no one's gonna question if this is real or not you know like i as, yeah. as american we're beat down with that so the idea that a simple system that works like <laughs> and well, and and this is what's so strange to me, Cole. Mm -hmm. Seeing the people that you interviewed want what we have here in America oh. is baffling to me. But without further ado, I want to get to this first clip. So this is what I prepared. This is just a really quick. Um, this is kind of the craziest moments. I just want people to get a small taste of what you dealt with here, uh, and then sure. I'll kind of pick your brain about this. So here's sure. the first clip. It's a couple of uh, clips that I threw together. My wife, this okay. <laughs> The sports said clothing's not essential, remember? No, clothing's not essential. This is what you get, you idiot. Idiot Ford. Yeah. Fucking idiot, what he is. Okay, that's all I needed. So what does InfoWars mean to you? Uh, first of all, at InfoWars.com, the website. <laughs> okay. All the, all the alternate media, all the news and that you don't hear on CNN. Okay. Everything you don't hear on CNN. So what are we not hearing? Oh my God. 
Where do you start? <laughs> Vaccines are killing people. Okay. Uh, there, there is no virus. Uh, you said there is no virus? We can go on and on and on. Okay. It's just, uh, I don't even know where to start. What's your name? Sandra? Sandra. Yo, that sounds like Saturday morning cartoon hero type shit. <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> yeah. Was so, really nice. Yeah, you actually had a great conversation with her, but I just loved your comment about the Saturday morning cartoon because it was so spot on. So I this mean, is, here's what's weird. This is in America, Cole. Or this no. isn't in America. This nope. is in Canada. So you mm -hmm. see InfoWars, you see the conspiratorial mindset, and it's not <laughs> as prevalent in Canada, but it still is a thing that is growing. And I feel like what we do, we kind of rub off on the worst of uh, Canada. Um, so there were a couple of moments throughout the course of this um, this event. You had some really solid conversations with people, and I think that you were incredibly nice to them. So there was no reason for them to be fearful of you. But they were very, very angry that you were there. So here's one clip that I wanted to play. Sure. I don't know what this lady had against you, but if you can break it down <laughs> for me and maybe psychoanalyze her, uh, sure. please do. Because this was really weird to me. You don't have to give me your name, bro. What makes you so upset? What's going on? First of all, I'm not talking to you. Why? No. But what did I do? Okay, the way that she said, I'm not talking to you, I don't know if that was because you're a lib or fake news or because uh, you have a different complexion than me. That vibe is what I got from her. What was your vibe? Okay, so that okay, so that woman right there is a huge supporter of Chris Sky. And my partner, um, I don't know if you saw, you know, I don't know if you saw her. My partner, Karima, she's the one who was doing this first and I'm the one who started joining her on this because mm. she's like this type of gonzo guerrilla journalism that we're doing, let's say Molly Conger and them types do no one else does it up here. Mm -hmm. So she was the only one. So I literally went down there. Like the first time I went to Toronto, I was like, let me do this with you. Cause I know how to do this. I know how to cover this. I got you. You know, like I used to always complain about Twitch streamers or streamer YouTubers. I won't name like, y'all don't even leave the house, man. There's a front line right mm -hmm. there. So it doesn't matter if I'm up here in Canada, Mike. I had to go out there and because I know how to maneuver these. So mm -hmm. basically, when I got there, she saw me with Karima. So, you know, she'd already identified the idea. I said, you know, I'm with, you know, I said, I'm, I'm with, uh, you know, I'm getting this footage for Means TV as well as TYT. Shout out to uh, Ray Varna and Jeff Waldorf. You know, I was on both of their shows showing the footage, et cetera. Yeah, big shout out to Jeff, too, because, you know, Jeff. You know why Jeff doesn't get harassed? Because he does no hot takes, whatever. Everything he does is measured at, hey, this is what happened in the news. But here's why you should go further left. So big shout out to Jeff. But mm -hmm. with that said, her, she just, I don't know if you notice, all the people around our age, Mike, you know, I'm, I'm about to return 39. But people that were, you know, mid-20s, late-20s, early-30s, you know, they were all really reasonable. And mm -hmm. this woman right here, it's just, You'll notice the people who are closest to this guy, like I said, think about Trump and the cult of personality. Yeah. Only I can do this. I have to do it all. I have to sell this and this and this. And that's what this individual, Chris Sky, that's what he's that's what he's, you know, been doing is revolving everything around himself and then pointing out, like, hey, you know, these individuals are getting in the way of my progress, and my progress is your progress. You can't progress without me. So she's only acting on that. You see what I'm saying? She's just acting right. on. Interesting. Um, I, I have to get to this because she comes back later <laughs> with a bullhorn and yep. she finds you. Yes. And so I want to play the rest of this clip because, sure. I mean, out of out of all of the people who I felt like were genu genuine threats to you, she probably wasn't a threat, but she was the most outraged at your presence there. So yeah. I'm going to let them yeah. uh, let them see this and, and see what you had to deal with. So that lady was really angry with you, but there was this one moment um, with this guy and he, I got really like weird vibes from him and I was genuinely worried for your safety here. So let me, let me play this sure. clip. Leave. Leave where? Why? 
I'm not welcome. Why? You're not welcome here. And there's the lady again, of course. Why? I mean, I'm, I'm going to film, and I'm going to be here. So, if as long as it is legally permissive for me to be here, then I'm going to be here. I'm as welcome here as you, as this is public land. I'm not here to antagonize anyone or hurt anyone. I'm just here to listen to our freedom for once. What was that? Don't bring your American stuff over here. You were all here to intimidate and to hurt Chris. That's what, so, so she's simping for Chris Guy again. But I wanted yeah. to ask you about that. So this is what confused me. So these are people who are LARPing as Americans. I think that's a really good way to put it. Yeah, because they're, he, they're just show, throwing around freedom every other word. Right. But yet he's angry that you're bringing this American stuff here. I just I'm I'm confused. It seems like a contradiction. And he just genuinely like I think he wanted to physically attack you, but he it took everything to hold it in. What is your take uh, on that? OK, my take is this now. Mike, you know I've been around a couple years now. You know, you've seen me, you know, a couple years ago as against some, you know, rather famous debaters. And that energy that you see me right there on the debate, I'll ask you, Mike, did I not explain that on the debate streams and things like that? This is how I carry myself. So, you know, I brought that energy right there. I'm going to do what I'm going to do because it's important. And if you're going to stand in the way of that, then we'll have to have a further discussion about it. So mm -hmm. whether or not he felt like he wanted to do something, I'm, it's just two of us, two, three of us out there. If he wanted to do something, it would have been done. So if mm -hmm. he had that, if he, if that was really in his heart to be that way, he would have done it. And it's not, and he, he, it's not, you know yeah. what I mean? And, I and, think he, that and that's the best way I could put it in all honesty. And, and as an outsider who wasn't there, I feel sure. like they were mad that you weren't intimidated by them. Yeah, I think that they expected you to kind of feel unwelcome, but you didn't really back down. And it's not no. like you were trying to be this overwhelming presence. You were literally just there filming and having conversations with people. And they didn't like that they weren't able to intimidate you. So we'll, we'll watch the rest of this. But there's sure. another I, portion. I hope I answered where... that, that question. I hope I was able to answer that. No, you did. You, absolutely. You. <laughs> no, because this is this is really this is fascinating to me. So sure. we'll, we'll play this off. And then I have another clip that I definitely want to no ask problem. you about. Twitter. Even the license plate says personal permission. Shame on you. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just, yeah. <sighs> so, um, the, the clip that I really wanted to ask you about is as scary as that lady was. I think that there was just a little bit of irrationality there. Uh, this next lady who confronted you, um, she was not backing down and it was, <sighs> we'll just, we'll, we'll play the clip and I'll shut up. I'm here just to ask him some questions. Hold on, you see Chris guy right there, Jason okay. Timmy? Right, that's this guy. Yeah, that would um, be him. Now, what you're, okay. what you're seeing, that, that black, the, the brother right there, that's the bodyguard. And I had to scope that out right away. You know? Oh, okay. So what you're going to see here is, now see, he doesn't know that I know, but he's going to move to my blind. Now, you might be wondering, like, you know, what else contributes to me not being scared is because m literally Karima is a lawyer for the crown. Mm. So whatever, you know, antics or whatever they want to give it a shot, she's right there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now she's not a criminal lawyer or whatever, but I mean, do you want to, do you really want to touch an independent journalist from means TV and a lawyer from the crown who's covering us? Do you really want to take it to that level? You know, do you really want mm -hmm. the, the, do you really want the headline, you know, American immigrant assaulted in Canada at anti-mask rally, <laughs> you know, because I mean, Mike, we have the power to make that headline with the people we know because that's what happened. If that's what would have mm -hmm. happened, but I don't. I shouldn't say we have the power, but it's like, yo, I could pass this off to five journalists. I was assaulted by the anti-mask rally. I'm just an innocent American journalist, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you want that headline? It's a choice to whether you want to do that or not. You see well, what I'm saying? Here's one thing that really is perplexing to me is that, and this is a generalization about right wingers in America. Uh, and I'm sure it extends to these people, the LARPers. But um, it, they often say, well, you know, the, these lefties, they don't want debates. They don't want to express ideas. I mean, you're yep. genuinely here to have them yes. tell you their thoughts. And you were unwelcome because you were perceived to be an outsider. And technically you were. You disagrereed with I them. Am. But I, I told you them. still, you weren't 
disrespectful at all. Uh, I watched everything uh, that Thank that you. was filmed. I, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> no, you you were okay. There were moments where I don't know how you held your composure, but you were incredibly polite. And for them to be this hostile, as we're going to see from this clip, it was really astounding. Um, and, and of course, we can't play all of the footage of, of this event, but you were you were very very polite with these people, no and problem. they just they wanted nothing to do with you, just uh, also, asking Mike, questions. You can always repost it on your Twitter because I put the whole thing up on my YouTube, so you know you can always okay, post. Okay. You, yeah, you can always if people want to see the whole thing. Just repost on on Twitter so the people can see it all. I'll link to it down below for those watching on YouTube. And if you're on okay. Means TV, you'll have to check out uh, the Twitter um, for uh, Cole. But let's go ahead and watch this no woman who confronted you and was very, very adamant that you uh, you leave because you disagree. I'm here to cover this. I'm here to cover this. I'm here because I was, I was paid to come and cover this, ma'am. Paid for what? No, we don't want fake news. We don't want fake news. We want real news. We don't want fake news. If you want fake news, go somewhere else. Where's the go real with news? Biden. Can you tell me where the real news is? Trudeau. Trudeau's a fake. Go to but who's the real news? <laughs> the real news? Yes. The news people. Isn't real. We the people. Bullshit. We the people are the real news. We okay. the people, yes. We the people. We're here for freedom. What are you here for? I got you, man. You know I got the sign. You know I got the sign on. Now you see how the bodyguard was in my blind spot? Yeah, yeah. But I know he's oh, there. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I know he's there, and I don't care. Okay. We are here for freedom. Now, if you remove the context, I would just assume this is in Mississippi. Yeah. We the people freedom so it's really it's a little bit I, I feel bad that americans are rubbing off on canadians in this way i mean it's not necessarily surprising because america has such a huge influence on the world but to know that uh you know americans have this much of a cultural sway over canadians it is a little bit depressing and uh we'll get to the guy who had that sign in a second here but i do want to show people <laughs> that even the weirdest bizarre little sub cults that we have it does exist in Canada. So for example, we have a lot of people who are adamant that the COVID vaccines don't work, but there's an alternate cure. And, and we're gonna see that here. Am I against ivermectin? I would say 99% of my colleagues are. Cole, how stupid for for being against ivermectin. What's wrong with you? Let me laugh in your face. You know, you know what? Here the thing is, is let me just tell you something, Mike. Like it's 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 to do this type of thing, when if you're going to walk into this type of hornet's nest, this is where me being, you know, me joking about me being a smiling, tall, handsome guy, I have mm -hmm. to turn the charm on all the way. Because, yeah. um, you know, um, I, I'll be honest, too. Like, I, 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 it came to a point where, hilariously, I turned down an anti-masker. I was like, my, I'm married. Okay, I, I can't, you know, like. Are like, you serious? It, yeah, yeah, like yeah, I did. I turned down an anti-masker. Um, and, and and the reason why I bring this up is because if I go in there and I just, you know, the way that I challenge them, things like that, mm -hmm. all I did was talk to them like normal people, you know, right? right. Because if, if I'm I'm not out there with any black block, I'm not a part of any political movement here in Canada. I'm plugged into folks, don't this ain't that, but I'm not a mm -hmm. part of any official movement, I'm there literally representing the news. So I have to do similar to I had to do similar to what uh, what, I forget the guy's name, uh, the Irishman who goes to the MAGA rallies, Jordan Klepper, who goes to the MAGA rallies, mm, right, John right. Oliver. I, I studied John Oliver from about a decade ago. I'm like, what do they do? And the thing is, is that when they find out that you're representing something, they can't wait to jump in front of the camera, call you fake news. And be like, You're going you're gonna to get that right. You know, and mm -hmm. so it makes it easier. Like I said, when you make people laugh and things like that. I'm sanitizing what I think are sick individuals who really, really, really are looking for something to believe in. And it's, yeah. a few, it's a few people taking advantage of individuals who, if you look, these people are lonely, Mike. These mm -hmm. people are lonely and nobody who has fulfillment in their life engages in something like this. If you yeah. like, you know, there's just no way. It doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have. Because most of these people have money. I'm sorry. Well, these are mm -hmm. not like working poor types. And there's an argument to be made that, look, if you have a mandate, you've got to address the, you know, inequality positions that led to the outbreaks in the first place before you force people. I do get that. But that's not what these individuals are saying. It becomes mm -hmm. Satan is going to overtake your DNA. OK. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, like what you see from True News and all that, like it's hilarious. I used to watch Right Wing Watch because I thought it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Now it's become 
well, this is the playbook. So when I yeah. go out to these rallies, I'm like, I, I'm here in out, I'm near upstate New York, near Toronto, et cetera. And I've got to hear this. That playbook yeah. is being used here. And so look, like I said, you look at ivermectin, then also you look at the damage that I can go ahead and say it, the Jimmy Tor door types are doing. It's having a direct effect on the health and mental well-being of people across the border. So that ignorance, we're exporting it. Yeah, that, that's that's perfectly put. We are exporting ignorance. And, and this is a photograph from the um, the booth yes. that the Ivermectin sisters had set up. I don't know if they're sisters, but that's what I'm calling them. And also you had this lady. She kind of came in and whispered about you. I don't know what she said. You couldn't really make it out. But she was just letting that person know, I think that you were fake news. But I think that your approach is good because you've been to enough of these to where you mm -hmm. know what approach to have. So if you come with the humor and the charm, I think that you disarm them and they think, OK, I might not necessarily like what you're doing but at least you're approaching me as a human being with yes. respect. So I feel like you did it in a really respectful way. And, and th that kind of shows through with this so, confrontation uh, with this guy who yes. I mean, clearly, I think that this guy is, he's bored. I think that he, that's what I felt too. You know, <laughs> I think he just, he wants to make friends and that's why he showed up here. But like I you know, said, you, Mike, these people are lonely. I'm being serious. I think so too. They are. No, I, I think you're absolutely spot on about that. I think that they're lonely and they, they're sh like, honestly, Part of this whole, these weird QAnon, anti-vax clicks that are forming, I think part of it has to do with people just finding some social circle that believes in them. It's like, okay, this person believes in my kooky views. It's kind of what we get from DSA meetings or from yeah, our own that's leftist what, that's social what groups. I got from them. Absolutely. Right. Right. So I think that we're seeing that here. And so trying to understand their mentality, just asking them basic questions about why they're here, why they believe what they're doing. I think this guy, honestly, I don't think he even believes in anything. I think that his whole shtick is that he told a joke to one of his friends. They laughed and he thought, I'm going to put it on a sign. I'm going to like show up. And, and you can kind of see that here. But let, let's watch and see what happens sure. when you kind of explain how mm, maybe this sounds a little bit homophobic, yeah. just a tiny bit. So uh, let, let's take a look at this. So you're wearing a mask and staying six feet from people simply because your government told you to. Aren't you glad they didn't ask me to tell you to suck, suck a dick? <laughs> 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 Straight, black Latino. Yeah. But what if I was gay and like sucking cock? What would be wrong with that? Fuck, man. It's still about I mean, hey, 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 everybody has a choice. You got a choice. That, that you got a choice. There you, you go. got a choice. Yeah. So are you, you're not saying it's wrong to suck dick because no. I'm sure you enjoy I, that. Yes, I, I do. Exactly. We all do. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get some clarification. It's just kind of putting it into perspective. I got you. Yeah. Okay. So I have to be honest, you know. I believe in, you know, a better society over the individual. That's yeah. just me. But it, this sign is kind of funny. Yeah. Regardless if I disagree with it. it this was like a debatable this, sign. They, said, they told you to drink a gallon of gasoline or something like that. That way it don't have to be like a homophobic thing. If they told you to drink See, a gallon of gasoline. That guy got it. That guy yeah. got it. Yeah, he yeah. got it. And you actually ended up having a pretty substantive conversation with that guy. It's weird yes. that like one of the biggest dressed weirdos, like the the just aesthetically speaking, the weirdest mm -hmm. person there, you ended up having a pretty solid conversation with. And I think you even told him that at one point. But yeah. um these guys yeah. were all younger though. They they were way right. more willing to understand and engage. And if you notice, like the boomer to the left of me, you know, like I said, he looked like one of the typical trucker Americans with the glasses yeah. on. And the, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, like these guys, they were willing to talk. And like I said, you can tell these guys are just out there having fun. The, the malice wasn't there talking to this guy, either of them. Yeah. You, you, know? you can tell which people were genuinely just distraught, which people were kind of just there because they wanted something to do and which people were really like they, they were angry. And you can you can almost see them <laughs> yes. seething at the fact that you were there. Um, and there's there's one moment that I wanted to show because we, we talk about like uh, LARPing, uh, Canadians mm -hmm. LARPing as Americans. Uh, you saw a don't tread on me sign there and you ask um, this guy about it. Yes. And. I have part of the conversation that I want to play here. Sure. Kitchener? Yeah. Kitchener with this flag? What, what motivates you from Kitchener to have this flag? Yeah, this guy's just don't try on my freedoms and rights, right? Like the, we're just being, uh, we're just being uh, railroaded by uh, by the government, right? Oh, and that's time to stand up and say no more. Ma'am, are you trying to get my picture? Go ahead, I'm right here. 
No, no, I got you. I got you. I'm a tall, handsome guy. You can get my smile. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. Look at how much. Look at how much. Yep. Rolled over. We rolled over for the government a lot harder than anybody else. Like Americans, I look. I look at my relatives in the United States. They fight. They fight this country. What do you mean? So that was really interesting to me, what he said there. He said that it's amazing how in Canada they roll over for the government more. He's talking about uh, their implementation of vaccine mandates, their lockdown protocols. So can you kind of explain to me the sentiment that they expressed along those lines? Because it seems like they really look up to their American counterparts who are fighting the COVID lockdowns, vaccine mandates. Was now, that here's, here's, I'm going to cut you off, Mike, only to Go say ahead. this. Okay. Sorry to cut you off, but I got to tell you this. Feel free. They talk about you rolled over for the government. You rolled over the government. You know these mm -hmm. individuals, and this, this I did not get you this footage because I did it mostly at the 9-11 rally in Toronto. Nobody knew about the vaccine mandate of 1885 that took place and the <laughs> riot that took place in Quebec. So this is what happened. There was a vaccine, was, you know, vaccine mandate, 1885, because of smallpox outbreaks, etc. And you remember I told you about the income inequality and things like that. Police were absolutely like, you know, forcing quarantines, you know, forcing people out of homes. Like it was a for real quarantine. Right. And what ended up happening was, was that there was a riot. The chief of police was stoned and stabbed. They broke police windows. And the reason why was because again, they had a mandate, but we're not addressing the inequity in the in, in, income inequities that took place. But nonetheless, the mandate happened, Mike. It mm -hmm. happened. It was, you know, they got, you know, smallpox was reduced and that was that. So, i.e., they're talking about, oh, the government rolled over. Well, last time I looked in Quebec, they was beating down police and destroying police stations. So who rolling over on me? You know, like so. But with that said, you know, I would bring up this vaccine mandate. And they're like, oh, I, I didn't know that. Now, keep in mind, imagine a country with free health care. And you're yeah. talking about, oh, yeah, you're just going to roll over? Okay. How about you roll over to the border, hand me your OHIP card, which is the um, me your medical card. Mm -hmm. Hand me your OHIP card. I will escort you to the border. I'll say you know me. I will take you to America. Um, Mike, I, I, I told you, I had, uh, you know, I had a couple surgeries, stayed in the hospital seven days. I had no insurance. I'd only been here for a month with my wife, right? We had to pay X amount up front. Only for five months later, they said, okay, yeah, um, you know, I got an extension here, things like that. Here, take the money. I thought it was a bill. We thought it was a bill. I'm like, what? What? You know? And the idea that, you know, we don't have freedom. We don't have, like, this and that. Don't tread on me. I mean, Mike, imagine a place where this is literally, Canada is genuinely, and I mean this, a British LLC. This mm -hmm. is a British LLC. Um, I don't know if you ever see the footage, footage when I'm like, I have a $20 bill. I'm like, the queen is on this money. So explain to me where the freedom is going to come from. Um, you know, they literally give money for the royal family, the oil, everything. People don't know Canada is basically a British protectorate. You know, mm -hmm. um, Karima, who I said is a lawyer, who you've got to have on this show because she could give you so much. Um, they literally wear robes and stuff like that to court. They literally, she's literally a, a lawyer of the crown. When it comes to police, that's like, yeah, protecting and serving the crown. So I think y'all need to have, you know, I, I even said it. I, you remember when I said um, on, on the rally, I said our slave masters had a revolution. Do you remember when I told that guy that? Mm -hmm. I told him, you know. So it's like, hey, um, until I, you know, y'all kick the red coats out. Um, this flag is kind of not only is it larpish, it's absolutely ridiculous. We yeah. love slavery and racism so much and money so much. We fought over that. Okay. Yeah. We fought over it. So I got to give the founding fathers credit for that. It's like, hey, at least y'all were about the action you were talking about as far as, you know, hey, you know, um, can we call this, hold this money from slavery, please? I can respect that. But don't come up here talking about freedom and this and that and the other when, you know, oh, we rolled over for the government forced vaccinations. Okay, how about you start choosing your own health plan and how much it's going to cost? Then you can talk to me about, you know, oh, we have freedom and that lack of things. Like, they do so much for their people here. But yeah. America, I don't know if you know, Mike, the reason why we don't have universal health care is because the idea that, you know, after smallpox and things like that, 
the idea that black people would be in good health was not a good look politically in D.C. So they said no to it. That's why how dedicated we are to our racism. And I read that in the New York Times, fake news uh, extraordinaire, <laughs> you know. Well, um, I mean, it, it goes back to the New Deal where yes. people of color were excluded from the New Deal. As good as that was, not everyone benefited from it. So it it is that like when you explain this, it is fascinating to think about how anyone in Canada would want what we have here. Because, I, I mean, that's not to say that Canada is a utopia, even with their single payer healthcare system. You know, it's not perfect. It needs to be more comprehensive. But it's still you get a bare minimum level of support that is just not given to us here in America. So to want that in any way, shape or form is very strange. A last clip that I want to uh, share uh, from this is with the conversation that you had with the guy with all of the spikes on. Um, where he tries to explain that he's not anti-vax per se. He just isn't vaccinated and doesn't want the mandates. Um, but overall, you kind of had a better takeaway from this guy because yeah, unlike everyone else, he conversed yeah. with you. Yeah, yes. yeah. So just being able to talk to someone, it really does make a huge difference, even if you don't, yes. uh, you know, agree. So uh, let's let's take a look at that. Okay. I got the mandates. You know, what if my mom's dying? She lives out of Victoria and I can't get on a plane to go bury my kid, dude. Okay. You know, that, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I mean, I'm in man, because I, I see the way things are going. I've been quiet this whole time, and I, I don't like the way things are going. Right? So you're so, anti-mandate, not anti-vax, correct? Yeah, you can take the vaccine, you know, by all means, you know, if you want to. That's, yeah. that's your Let body. me be honest with you. This yeah. is one of the most reasonable conversations I've had since I got here. I okay. appreciate it. Okay. All right. All right. I, 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 I'm going to dap you up right quick. Yeah. I don't want my hands in on blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that was that was a bold move, Cole, with the with the spikes on his hands. Uh, very risky. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just being honest, you know. <laughs> but no, I, I mean, he talked to you, so that makes him kind of above a lot of the people. Going back to the lady who was screaming at you with the bullhorn and the guy who was trying to intimidate you, so it does make a difference. But at the same time, it's still frustrating because you know he he brought up this point, this this circumstance where what if he has to bury his mom and he can't get on a plane because he's not vaccinated. Well, then you get the fucking vaccine. So it's like I'm frustrated that that's the most reasonable person there. Um, but at the same time, just having the willingness to talk that that does make me respect him, especially watching all of the footage. Like it was about 40, 45 minutes yes. long. So watching all of it, seeing him, it's like, OK, normally I would be very angry with you because what you said was stupid. But you talked to Cole like a human so I, yeah. I respect it so uh what's your takeaways overall you, you know you you went to this event um give us the overall takeaway how do you feel compared to let's say an American rally that you've you've attended what I feel is that I'll give you an example Justin Trudeau okay seemingly nice guy this and that and the other on one hand you know he plays the game politically on the other hand you know Let's say you have the residential schools, things like that. You know, First Nations being frustrated. And he's actively fighting them in court not to give them money. Then he has a debate the other day with Jagmeet Singh. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I, you know, Jagmeet's like, hey, you're, you're taking residential school kids to go. Oh, no, I'm not. Now, think about this. Liberals, the party, liberal party here don't make nobody happy with stuff like that. You know, you, you go halfway, you, you, you half-ass caring, you end up with stuff like that. Now, going back the other direction, you have Doug Ford, the conservative. I mean, just a useless premier. Same deal. Just does enough to not be hated because he wants to be liked, you know? So you have the liberals and conservatives doing honestly not much, right? Then you have the NDP. Some people mess with that. Do you see how you could go from supporting the NDP, which is the left party, instantly into supporting the PPC, which is an alt-right party? Do you see how instantly that happens? I mean, it's 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 when you feel like the conservatives and liberals aren't doing anything, you're going to go to who where you think are going to be results. And you know what? Up here, it's not even just white people. You have you know, what you have is people in wellness, people of color in wellness and things like that saying like, hey. Do you remember what they did historically to our people, the vaccine? Yeah, Justin Trudeau's for that, the conservatives for that, but the PPC, they're going to do like literally alt right messaging altered just enough to get people of color to sort of co sign it. 
you know, without fully knowing or understanding, like, yo, no, these people hate us. And that's why, you know, you see, like I said, not this rally, but no sauce was this rally, but the Toronto rally. Yo, I was getting attacked by other black people there. You know, I was getting attacked. Like my buddy Kareem was getting attacked by other Asians there. I mean, the best part about the Toronto rally was the girl who had her titties out. You know, just like that guy, the, the guy was there naked, but at least at the Toronto rally, the girl, you know, who's a sex worker had, I mean, like, it, it, at least we had that. But yeah, I'm telling you, Mike, like, you know, yes, it's, it's, it's honestly is a lot of white grievance, but mm-hmm. what they do in the cities is they go out, they go after the yoga mat types and things like that, you know, or what I like to tease as the blavity blacks, you know, like they go mm-hmm. after people that are about self-help and wellness. I'm like, you really want to put that in your body? And I have to be honest. Yes, our people are susceptible to that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at the end of the day, the only thing I can always argue with folks of color is, or what white people is, I want you to name one instance where any government in North America harmed white people as a whole. Not on some class type stuff, but like harmed white people as a whole. Experimented mm-hmm. on white people and it harmed white people as a whole. That's just not going to happen. You know, the mm-hmm. whole reason why these vaccines are free in America and things like that is because capitalism requires labor. And if that labor is going to be killed off, they need someone to do that work. So they're only acting in good faith to continue their bad faith, you know, to continue the bad faith of capitalism. Exactly. You know what I mean? Even the even the good deeds are hidden behind bad faith reasoning, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I sort of try to explain that because obviously I'm a freaking communist, but it doesn't matter what I call myself. All that matters is the actions and the results of those actions, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's really all I care about. With that said, Mike, like that's my takeaway is when 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 you have premiers and politicians who aren't listening to the people, this is what we're gonna this is what you get even in Canada. Like mm-hmm. I said, the pipeline from voting for the far left NDP to the far right PPC, it's the same as well, I voted for Bernie, but I'm going for Trump now because it I you see why. And yeah, I'm not justifying it at all. Because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a black man. You know, I speak Spanish, etc. Like, you know, black Latin, whatever. You, I never use the word Latinx. I don't even like using the word Latin, etc. I don't think anybody but does. The point <laughs> is, no, Latinx. but the point in saying this is, uh-huh. I see it. I'm seeing it. Mm-hmm. When you have, when you take away, you know, because I hate the way when they say working class, it always means white folks, etc. But right. I'm in Canada, which is a majority white country with First Nations, right? Mm-hmm. With First Nations. You'll see First Nations folks who rock with the PPC for whatever, God knows whatever reason, you know? Um, you'll see First Nations folks who say F the NDP because, uh, you know, there's a woman named uh, Mumalak Makakak who from uh, from the Northern Territories who felt mistreated by the NDP, who mm-hmm. felt that Jagmeet, you know, allowed her to be bullied, et cetera. Keep in mind, none of it, that Northern Territory, the average age is 26, Mike. 26 wow. years old, okay? And so... They're already, like I said, like people are like, what the hell do we do? Because we're not getting anything from anyone. Now, I'm not an expert mm. in, poli- in Canadian politics, obviously, but the trend is the same. Yeah. You know, you've got to deliver. You've got to deliver. Justin Trudeau just cut off the CERB, which is the 2000 a month. My wife mm. didn't work for damn near a year, but was able to get that 2000 a month like, I can't believe they're getting two grand a month. Anyway, Mike, she didn't it's work for a year. It's inconceivable to me. Yeah, all she had to do was apply. No, that was it. She just applied. Next day it was there, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, they're canceling that. It's like, okay, why are you canceling that? People still need help. People yeah. are still, like I said, the vaccine mandates and the maneuvering around that. So you're going to cut it off? Yeah, how does that do anyone any favors? It's the same deal. I mean, Mike, we need all these things in reconciliation. This and that. And Joe Biden is like allowing Mansion and every and everyone else, you know. Now you think about Mansion and Cinema. There's always been a Mansion and Cinema. If it wasn't exactly. them two, it'd be Lieberman and these other clowns, right? Yep. So it's yeah. like Biden. Biden has. You know, I got to be honest. After seeing what Trump did, Biden has the power to make it look ugly if you don't do what he says. And then they don't. Right. Then they don't. Yeah. So you have two trends where you have voters not getting what they feel they want. So they're just going to say, screw it. I'm broke anyway. What difference does it make? So you get non-participation multiplied by white grievance equals what you're seeing right now. That's the best way I could put it in perspective as an American looking at this. Yeah, and that's a great closer. What this footage showed to me 
is that uh, or confirmed rather is that it doesn't matter where you are what country you're in whenever there's a situation where the government isn't delivering adequately where there's desperation you're going to see that become a breeding ground for radicalization you're going to see people be susceptible to conspiratorial thinking and when you let that fester for too long it gets worse and worse and worse and eventually it gets so big that it consumes the entire political system. I mean, for the first time in 90 years in America, once again, we're questioning how many people are turning against democracy because of 2020. And, and you know, it goes beyond that, just lack of participation. So, yeah, this is this is really fascinating. And I'm really thankful for um, for you pr- giving me this this footage. Before don't you go, leave though, without, though, because we have something that we need. To talk yeah, about. I was going to say yeah. you, 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 you're bringing a little bit of tea um with you that you have for my viewers now i'm gonna preface anything you say by saying that i am absolutely a simp for hassan so don't be mad at me hassan um so without further ado take it away cole listen first of all i want to preface hassan my dude you know when i got in a debate with another um debate bro and kind of threatened that individual hassan understood why i did (laughs) okay that was actually the last time i spoke to him because i dm'd him about Hmm. that he's like yeah Michael says you cool. And I'm like, yeah, Hassan's always been a good dude. And I also want to say, you know, Andre, you know, rocks with Hassan. You know, he's been on a show, et cetera. Like, like it's, this isn't, this is all jokes. But is it though? Because according to Chank Uger, who spoke to my good friend, who I mentor, the young up and coming Ravana, shout out to Ravana, you know, yes. uh, from TYT, says that Hassan played a basketball game with Dave Rubin. Okay, and that Dave Rubin crossed him up, i.e. did a crossover and or took him to the rack so bad that Hassan's back injuries that he complains about are literally from Dave Rubin. I mean, you know, as the kids would say, sounds like Dave Rubin blew Hassan back out. (laughs) Um, Now, when asked now, formerly known as Andre Gibney's brother Q. Now, when Hassan asked Q to come on and talk about, you know, when the riots were happening, you know, Hassan's always looked at Q to, you know, give him a good perspective, you know, things like that, right? Q actually on Twitter said, hey, you know, your uncle and things like that, the the streets are saying that you got crossed up by Dave Rubin. Hassan replied, now, you know, the number one money-making political streamer in our ecosystem, don't just be replying. He (laughs) replied with something like, oh, I didn't get, you know, but we did play, we did play now. Shout out to Marcus of Left Flank Vets, black man. Me, black man. Q, black man. When we see that, oh, so a game took place, but you're not saying what happened, in the black community, that's a, that's cause for response. Okay? <laughs> now, I'm not saying Hassan doesn't care about black issues. I mean, I literally covered a three-part series about how in Tennessee they're jailing those kids, these they were jailing these kids for made up crimes, etc. But right now, this is a basketball issue. This supersedes that as a black issue. Okay, Hassan? <laughs> All right, like this is the number one issue in, 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 in black America on as far as Twitch right now. Dave Rubin crossing anyone up. First of all, apparently Dave Rubin is six feet tall. Dave Rubin is six Dave feet tall. Rubin? I was like, okay, so he can ball. Apparently no. Dave Rubin can ball. We need a fact check on this. I, I refuse to believe anything hey, about Dave Rubin. Now, that listen, <laughs> this is according to his uncle, Chank Uger. This is corroborated by Ray Vonda, but listen to me, Mike. I have contacted one of the upper echelon, the face of TYT. I will, will not reveal who they are. And I texted. I said, hey, you know, Hassan, blah, 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 this and that. Like, do you think you could come on? You know, they were like, even if it's just for 15 minutes, I am busy, but I will pull up. I will. Oh my God. I was like, so I've been tweeting Hassan, Q tweeted Hassan, this and that, and he's not replying. Now it's okay to ask black people to come on his show, this and that and the other to cover it. We good with that, right? That's cool. I told you Hassan always been cool, right? But when black people ask to come on black shows to talk about, hey, you know, did you get crossed up by Dave Rubin? Let me tell you something. If Dave Rubin crossed me up, I'm committing a flagrant foul on that court right then and there. <laughs> Okay, I am not allowing <laughs> high level ideas to do me dirty like that on the court. Okay, that's not gonna happen. Um, you know, and I'm just thinking, uh, shout out to my friend Michael Brooks, you know, RIP, shout out to my father, Sam Cedar. Um, you know, I gotta be honest, Mike, if you know he's not gonna respond, maybe you know, 
I know you saw you got your fans to unratio a video. Maybe you could mm -hmm. have them ask, hey, can you guys ask Hassan why why won't you come on Log Off already? Our non-politics show that I have with Andre Domis and uh Nia Cola. Shout out to Nia Cola, my economist at Queer Money, Queer underscore money. One of your first uh supporters, uh, Mike, as I told you. With that said, y'all need to tweet Hassan and ask, when are you gonna come and answer Andre Domis and Nicole James Cash? about black issues like you getting crossed up by Dave Rubin. <laughs> All we want him to do is come on. You know? <laughs> All we want him to do is come on and answer these questions. Marcus from Left Flank Vets wants to know, too. I mean, Shank ain't lying. Ravana can cooperate. And one of the main members of TYT is willing to come on. Yet, I guess, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're doing a black show you with black people, I guess, you know, you gotta wait for, you gotta wait for the white man to just reach down and Give you that Hassan stimulus package. <laughs> you, know okay, how, cool. you know how Drake, you know how Drake be doing the, you know, like your guest on songs. That's the Drake stimulus. This is a Hassan stimulus right here. Man. I'm sorry. Okay. okay, I'm done. <laughs> this this is the most investigative journalism I've seen on something since <laughs> fucking uh, Watergate. Like this is this is incredible. The digging that you did to uncover the details. I mean, Mike, I literally have <laughs> I literally have teamed with Brooke Minkowski on this anti-mask stuff. Shout out to Brooke Minkowski, one of the best debunkers in the world in America. And I told her about this. She's like, what? This happened? You know? The real – Mike, thank you being Humanist Report Means TV. Thank you for covering the real issue. This isn't about Hassan and all the money he make in the mansion. No, 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 no. Because when you step on that court, Hassan, it's just you. Okay? It's just you. Can't nobody save you. But you can save yourself getting roasted from black people on Twitch by appearing on the show. That's all you got to do. If, Come if that, us. Honestly, if if him going on your show stops him from getting roasted, I honestly would make the case that this is good for the left overall. Like, yes. we have to bury this story. And if you're actually threatening to release this story, this could hurt the left. I mean, you know, I, I mean... mean we're not trying to expand on it, but we need him there. We need him to show up. If you could just ask your fans to ask him. You know, I'm just an innocent American immigrant with questions. Okay? That's Folks, uh, now, you know what, Cole? You don't get to play that when you're trying to give Dave Rubin credibility. Dave <laughs> Rubin. This is it, serious. Every Hassan day he ignores us, it gives Dave Rubin the credibility. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Every day he ignores us, it gives credibility to Dave Rubin <laughs> that you got done dirty on that basketball court. Uh, the thought of Dave Rubin like actually one upping anyone on anything it does it does honestly hurt me and sends me to a dark place. So I want it to be wrong, but I suspect that is true. But I would love for Hassan to go on your program. Thank you and debunk this. I Thank I absolutely you. unequivocally endorse this because Hassan, we have to bury this story. It it can't. I mean, Cole's not bluffing. Cole's gonna release no, release the. No. He's gonna spill it. He's gonna release the tapes. Is there I tapes? Mean, I mean, no. Am I, am not, I... I mean, Shank ain't lying. Shank ain't never lying. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Shank ain't never lying. You know. <laughs> this is serious. This is a serious situation, yes. and yes. I'm. Either way, either way, um, I hope that the best outcome is is what happens, and that is to protect the left. By <laughs> never giving Dave Rubin a win, so Hassan is still on their program. The perspective that yes, it is harming the left. The him entire not left. This. Yes, you can't let these things linger. You know, oh my you can't God. let these things. Thank you. Mike. Thank you so much, man. Out of everything we I could have said, <laughs> all the political stuff I could have covered. This was this is the real issue. Thank you so much, Mike. Man. Why isn't so anybody else talking about this? I feel like I, this I, is I, kind of a big thing. I don't that know, man. A lot I mean, of people. Would you would you let me just ask because you're basically you're 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 on the ground now you're a journalist. Yes. Um would this make me a journalist for covering this? Do I get I think, to graduate think, from commentator to journalist for covering this? Is this is Pulitzer level This is Pulitzer level revelations here. Because wow. like I said you have the face and I told you who it was offline the mm -hmm. face of TYT who says absolutely even if it's just 15 minutes you know how busy they are. Okay? And then you have Ravana from <laughs> TYT I mean, come on, like, like, is Hassan afraid? Uh, did he leave TYT because of what happened with Dave Rubin? We don't know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> see, we can only ask him. How quickly the left wants to eat their own. How <laughs> I know. quickly the We're left will eat their it. own. 
We're trying to. I I said Marcus. We're part of the problem. Marcus from that flake vest. Don't do it to him, please. Let's just wait. And Marcus like, okay, all right, <laughs> you know. But, but I mean, the best. I mean, last thing I have to say is Hassan. Do you love black people? Only time will tell when you when you come on. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Cole, thank you so much for coming no on problem, and giving man. me almost an hour of your time. Before you leave, sure. please tell the people where they can find you, uh, what you do, how they can support you. Uh, sure. Let them have it. Okay, so um, you can also find me November 19th at Wonderville, Brooklyn. I will be headlining. That's out in Bushwick. I will be headlining for House of Feelings Records. Um, I represent Footwork slash Juke slash Ghetto House. Um, I will be playing a set there. You can find me at Grifter160. I also have a serious YouTube show, um, the Cole James Cash Show. You can find me on YouTube slash YouTube.com slash Ghetto News Network. Shout out to me and CV. They actually own that URL. They just nice enough not to take it from me yet. And then finally, my main, I am on Twitch with Andre Domis and my beautiful co-host and e e economist, which I know Mike will be having on this program to discuss jobs and the trends of those. Because um, if she can explain it to me, Mike, she going to blow your mind. With that said, que at Queer Money, um, the show's called Log Off Already. You can catch us on Twitch, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. And then, of course, before that, our sister show, Ray Vana TTV. You know, like I said, that's our sister show right there. It's like from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. We run that. We run 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. on Twitch. Now, before anybody disputes, like, oh, you guys only have 3.000, whatever, combined. You gotta, let me tell you something. Okay, who's your favorite artist? Oh, did you know NSYNC outsold them? Did they run did they run rap? No, they didn't. Okay. Stop looking at the numbers. Okay. All right. All right. That's that's what I do. Like, oh, I'll put it like this. People will be like, oh, you don't have that many Twitter, Twitter followers. How many followers did Jesus have? So long as I have more than 12, <laughs> I am righteous. Okay. Stop <laughs> looking at the numbers. You know, you see what I have to do to like you see you see the type of maneuvering you gotta do when you're trying to get things going. <laughs> yeah. I, you, you know what? I, I think that. That's indisputable. Jesus yeah. had 12, twelve disciples. Yeah, if yeah. You got if, more than twelve. You good, Mike? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can do this. <laughs> you know, you know that, that that's it. You good? And like I said, thank you for having me on. Like I said, log off already, Mike. You've already got your invite extended. Whenever you're ready, next week, week for after, sure. whenever you're free. If you don't want to talk politics and you're ready to get into who was sleeping with who. Who was DM and who over IG? Oh God! Non-political figures, okay? You know, um, um, like I said, I don't lie. I played a quip of Bober going off on Alec Baldwin because, hey, unsafe working conditions. I wanted to hear what Bober had to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, before we leave, I have to ask to see your Rick and Morty shirt real quick. Oh, this is my wife's. Oh, it's this your wife's shirt. Wife's. Yeah. Okay. Like, I Love have it. been too lazy to wash clothes, so I'm stealing my wife's clothes. There you go. Probably stealing her panties too. You know, I mean, I'm I just, won't it's, judge. It's, it's no exactly. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Yeah. You know, she she's gonna love that you love the shirt. I like I like Rick and Morty. She likes it. We know it's problematic, but so is Michelle Fiore and Megan McCain. And I love them too. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Cole.